Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. Today, I just needed to set up a little mini game where you add up using basic binary math. And um, I figured it might be worth just showing the process of how I set this up. Maybe it would be helpful to somebody else. So here, I've just got a pretty ugly example, but I hit play. It picks a random number between 0 and 255. And then I just have to check the boxes until I add up to that goal. So these are just the bits that you would have in a binary number. So let's see if we wanted to get to 131, we need 128 and two and one, and then we get to 200 and so on. And then you just kind of have to keep figuring out the combinations until you get the, uh, oh wait, I missed, um, until you get the right number, right? So eventually this will be on like a pretty UI where there are levers and stuff that you pull to try to reach the number instead of just check boxes that are toggled on and off with the number right above them. It'd be something quite a bit fancier, but the basic logic is pretty simple and exactly the same. So I just wanted to show that and show the, uh, the way that I would set all this up. So here we're just gonna restart with an empty scene and rebuild this thing from scratch. So just go to game object and I need a UI. So I'm gonna start with a canvas and then under the canvas, I'll create a panel. Then I'll make the panel solid so that it's not transparent. We don't have a skybox in the background there. And then under the panel, I want to add another panel. So I'll just go to UI and add a second panel right there. And then I'm going to switch to 2D mode, hit F to zoom out, and then just kind of squeeze this panel down. This is where I'm going to put all my toggles. Under this panel, just create a toggle, go to UI and toggle. Let's go find it. And then I want to make this thing a lot bigger. So I ended up just scaling this up. Let's just increase the size of the toggle for now. And then I moved the text right here, this label. I just grabbed it and dragged it up there and set the value to one or something like that. Then for the toggle, I needed to create a script. So we just create a bit toggle script. And then in this script, we're just going to keep track of the number and then fire some event off when the value changes. So if it's checked, it fires off and lets our counter know that, hey, this has changed. If it's unchecked, same thing. And then we just modify the value that we have added up. So let's see, this thing is almost open. Cool. Let's delete out all of this, clean up the formatting. And uh, one thing I need first before I go any further is a serialized field for the number. So just do private int number. It's gonna be that one, two, four, eight, sixteen, and so on. Um, then I need to add a validate. So I do like this. I do void on validate. And here I just want to set the text value to the number. So just do get component in children text. And I gotta add the using statement for UI. And here we'll just set the text value to number dot to string. And it's even good to set the game object name too. So the game object dot name equals toggle and then I'll do plus number. So that way our number will just automatically be there and we can see it nice and easily. Clean that up a little bit. Now I also need to register my toggle changed and do some work there, right? So let's Let's see, I think I want to go on awake. So I do private void awake. And here I want to do get component toggle. And first thing I want to do is turn it off. So is on equals false. I don't want my toggle to start on. Then I want to also get the toggle again. And of course we could cache this, but we don't need to. We're just throwing this stuff away anyway. And then we'll get the toggle again. And here we're going to go on value changed dot add listener. And I want to register my own event, so I'll call this handle toggle changed. Now we could hook this all up in the UI, but I prefer to just do it in the code so it's very visible, at least visible to me. Maybe less visible to a game designer, but more visible to the programmer. And then here, this is just going to be, um, what do I want to call this argument? I guess just enabled. Now when this changes, the toggle doesn't really need to do anything. It just needs to let other things know that the value has changed. So I just created an event here. I'm gonna go public event action. And since I have the using system there, it works. If you don't have that, you'll need to add that. Then I give it an int and a bool. So the int is gonna be the number, the bool is gonna be whether this thing was turned on or off. 
and I'll just call this on toggle changed and then I'll assign it an empty delegate so that way if I call it and nothing's registered we don't get a null reference exception not gonna happen here but just a habit of mine so then right here in the on toggle handle toggle change we'll just call on toggle change pass in number and enabled and then we're done with the toggle that's all we needed for that so we've got a toggle here with a value of one and I'm gonna turn this into a prefab just well actually first I'm gonna do I have the script on here nope I'm gonna add my bit toggle script set the value to one and then I'm gonna drop it down here as a prefab then I'll collapse it and let's add a horizontal layout group to the panel right here horizontal layout group and this thing's off so I'm just gonna drag it over we could fix the layout but I don't care enough so just slide it over there now I'm gonna duplicate this toggle just hit duplicate 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 that's four five six seven eight I need eight total select the second one change the value to two and go four eight 16 and so on 32 64 128 and there it is 1 28 and then I'm gonna save my scene just because something might happen don't want to crash and lose everything right okay so now I've got all of these I want to create another object that calculates out the sum of all of these and just shows it up here so I'm gonna create a first I'll create a text object let's just go to the panel right here Go UI and text, and then I'm gonna move it up, uh, rescale it a little bit, maybe give it a bigger font size, like 60-ish. I'm gonna go like 90. I wanna make it nice and big. And then I'll set the value to zero. This is just gonna be the total. And I'm gonna add a header too, so I'll call this a total header. Or current, yeah, current total header. This is just gonna be like the current value. Yes, but uh, current, and I need to make this bigger. There we go. And just pull it over here. I just want to have something that shows the value. Oh, I put a T there. Let's get rid of that. So that's the current is at zero. And then I'll set a target or goal here in a moment. I just want to get these texts. And I'm going to just name this current text so I can find it easily, save my scene again. Now I need to create a calculator that's just going to calculate the values of all of these and put it up there. So I'm just going to create a new script. And I'm going to call this, um, no, let's just call it calculator. Now our calculator in the start method, we'll just find all the objects of type, uh, bit toggle. So var all toggles equals find objects of type bit toggle. I'll clean this up a little bit. Then I just want to loop through them all. So for each bar toggle in all toggles, I just want to do toggle dot on toggle change plus equals and then create a method here. So remember this integer is the number and the bool here is enabled. Now only a couple of things left to do. I want to create an int to keep track of my current value. So do public int total and then I'm gonna give it a getter and a private setter. I don't want anything external setting this. And then here I'll do if enabled total plus equals number, else total minus equals number. So here, since remember we're starting with all these unchecked, when we enable, we'll just add the number. So if we enable four, we'll add four. If we disable eight, we'll subtract eight. And our number will just line up and automatically be there. We don't have to go through and loop through and recount and recalculate all of these or anything like that. Um, let me think, update, I don't think we need to do anything. Oh, but we do need to update that text. So let's delete the update method and let's create a serialized field. So a serialized field and we'll do private text, gen add the using statement there. And we'll just call this um, current or let's call it total text. Call it total text right there. And then when we toggle, when we do the toggle change, we're just gonna set, oops, not that. Total text dot text equals total dot two string. So here we're just setting that total value. And then jump back over to the editor real quick. 
and I'll create a calculator. So I'll just go game object, create empty, calculator, add the script. And then as soon as it's done recompiling, if I've saved my files, which I hadn't, there we go. Now once it recompiles, we'll have that text field and I'm just gonna drop current text onto there. So there we go, current text is on, hit play, and we should be able to just click the use now and see the current value change. There we go, so it changes, modifies, goes up and down, exactly as I'd expect. Now the last part is just adding a little bit of gameplay so we have a target number. Like I said, again, this is gonna be a much prettier display in the final version. Um, it's not just gonna be numbers here, it'll be some visual thing that you're trying to match, but behind the scenes it's adding up some binary numbers here. And they could be in some random order or something, so you have to figure out the combination and the values of things. Um, to set this up though, I just want to create a basic game controller. So I'll just create a script. I'll just call it game controller. It's really generic, but like I said, this is a pretty simple example. And we'll open that up. There we go, let it reload. And this one too is going to have a text field that it updates to tell me what the target is. So I'll just add a serialized field and I'll do private text. Again, add the using statement and we'll call this target number text. And then we need a value to keep track of for the target number. So I'll just do private and target number. Um, in awake, so let's add an awake, private void awake. We'll just cache the calculator. So just calculator equals find object type calculator. So I want to be able to get that calculator value. And we'll just do that in our update, I think. So I've got that cached here. And then um, let's see, we need to start off by choosing a new number. So let's, let's create a method to do that. We'll do private void choose new number. And here we'll just set target number equal to unity engine dot random dot range zero to 255 since that's what we're supporting. And then we will set the text. So we'll do target or yeah, target number text dot text equals target number dot two string. So then when we choose a new number, we're just updating the UI there. Um, I think the final thing we need is in our update to actually force it to choose new numbers. So let's see, let's scroll down here. Yeah, mark that as private explicitly, fix the formatting. And then I'm gonna do if calculator.total equals target number, then we just want to choose a new number, right? So by default, it's gonna start off, calculator total is gonna be zero, target number is gonna be zero, and we're gonna get a new number. And I think that's all we have for code. So now we just jump back over to the editor uh, we need to create a, another set of text fields, so I'm just going to select my two that I have here, duplicate them, move them over, and then rename them. So I'll call this uh, target text, and this will be target total header. Just, just keeping them named kind of clean. And now let's create a game controller. So create an empty game controller, that's what we'll call it, and we'll add that game controller script. The last step is just add the target number text right here. Save our scene, press play, and we should have a working, very basic little mini game. So now I need to get to 203. Let's see, 203, there we go. I made it, now I get 72 as my number. So let's go with, um, oh, there we go, 72. So again, like I said, just a basic, simple example of the logic and setting up the game flow a little bit, hooking things up will make it much prettier in a, in a final version, hook these things up to something fancier than just a checkbox and some text boxes. But the code behind will all be the same, and I just kind of wanted to share the, um, the logic and the steps of all this with you. So again, like always, if you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Um, also, feel free to join my email list. Just hop over to unity3d.college and you get a little pop-up. Join, I send out emails every day with cool little tips, tricks, and stories and stuff and answer questions. So just reply to one of those, shoot me a question, and I'd be happy to help you out in any way I can. Again, thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.